This is Roosevelt Gifts with Auto Network, and we're here in Concord, North Carolina, for another session in our Ask the Dealer segment. And my guest on the show is Cindy Minot, the dealer principal for Ben Minot Pontiac Buick GMC. Our discussion today will focus on the new car salesperson. Cindy, thanks for taking the time. Oh, it's my pleasure. Appreciate being asked. When you mention car salesperson to most people, it's always a negative connotation. Uh, why do you think that still exists? Well, it is an unfortunate stereotype, and um, unfortunately, I think probably some of the, the habits that we've been stereotyped for probably still do exist in, in some places, unfortunately, and uh, most of us are working very hard to overcome those stereotypes of old, and, and the business has changed a lot, and the job has changed a lot, so um, I think most people going into dealerships today will have a very different experience from what they expect. Now, the salesperson position is not... I would, what I would call an aspirational profession. What are you all doing to try and make that an aspirational profession? Well, it's the, the opportunities are, are great. Um, what we try to do, of course, is to, to grow our own employees. We like to hire at this particular dealership people who maybe haven't had an experience in automobile sales uh, before. We go to job fairs, local job fairs, to, to find young people who are people people. You know, they're very friendly, uh, gregarious, have good um, communication skills, um, and bring those folks on. The, the opportunities are great within the business. It doesn't require a college degree. Certainly, you need to be articulate and intelligent. Uh, but beyond that, uh, you need to have a good work ethic. So um, with that in place, we will give the people the knowledge and the skills that they need to become successful car people. And the pay is just excellent. I think people... Um, High school counselors and, and parents of the high school students are very surprised when they see what the opportunities are within the business. Now, I'm glad you mentioned pay because that's, I talk to a lot of salespeople across the country and that's one of the negative sides of, I guess, being at a dealership. You all like to mess with what they call the pay plan on a regular basis. Is that something that's changing in the marketplace? Well, again, that's going to vary dealership by dealership. Um, we're very aware of the fact that that's one thing that you don't mess with is a man's pay and or a woman's pay, a person's pay. Um, so we're very careful not to do that. Um, but I, I do hear horror stories of, um, of pay changing at some places. But, um, you know, that's just, again, it's a commission job, and that, that is very scary for some folks to, um, you know, have to rely on a, a commission-based income. What is the typical day of a salesperson? Uh, well, they, they work a, a schedule, uh, generally in teams. Of course, they can come in more often if they'd like or, or longer hours than, than they're scheduled. Um, they usually come in, spend the day um, retrieving messages, any messages that they've got, following up with the folks they've talked to before, uh, sending out letters to uh, previous customers. Um, then uh, they will spend a lot of time in product knowledge, really, is something we do now. A lot of that's web-based, of course. And uh, when they are not with the customer or not calling customers, prospects, they should be working on their product knowledge because there's just no end to that. <laughs> now, the Internet has really changed the car business, and it's really changed mm -hmm. in terms of product knowledge that the, the car salesperson has to be up on. What are you all doing to make sure that your sales force stays abreast at least no, if not more, equal to than the mm -hmm. customer that comes in the door. That is a real challenge. You're not kidding. Particularly somebody who's, who's shopping for a particular car, they you can bet they've done their research. So for us to be credible, we do need to know exactly what, as much as they do and more, and about the competition. So it's not just learning our General Motors products, but it's whatever the, the customer may be um, shopping as well. Um, obviously, we have internet access here for all the salespeople. And the manufacturers have training programs that they offer um, that are required, actually, to be um, taken and passed by all of the, the salespeople to be certified. Um, and then it's just we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training. We send the salespeople out uh, to General Motors, in our case, General Motors-sponsored training events. The GM, GM has a trainer that comes to us, actually, and does walk-arounds. The training and education is just a constant process. Now, turnover in the business is, I've heard numbers as great as, as high as over 50%. 
I'm sure that must wreak havoc on the bottom line as, and as well as you're trying to keep people. Is that a true and accurate figure? And if so, why? Um, I would say that probably is an accurate figure. Um, a lot of that, I think, in our case, when we see it happen, when we go back and sort it out, we think a lot of it's the result of poor hiring decisions. Just, you know, taking, accepting anybody for the position that's available. And that is, you know, we really need to do a better job of, of hiring thoughtfully and uh, doing some more testing, uh, personality testing for folks to so that we can find people that are most likely to be successful in this business. Now, NADA has a salesperson certification program. And for those of you who may not know, that's the National Auto Dealers Association. Do you think that's a good program? And, uh, and if so, have you taken advantage of it? It's an excellent program. They've researched it for years. They've tweaked it. Uh, we have not. We have chosen instead at, the, at this store to rely on the manufacturer's certification to uh, go through the product knowledge um, pieces there and the salesmanship pieces that General Motors is offering. In terms of the hours of the salesperson, what are your normal scheduled hours? And I think you mentioned earlier that they can work more than that. Oh, absolutely. Um, one thing about being in retail, when the, when the uh, customer needs us, we need to be open. So we do open, uh, the sales floor opens at 8.30 in the morning and during the daylight savings hours, we're still open till nine at night. Uh, or certainly later, if we've got customers here, we'll stay until we're through. Um, and then we close at eight o'clock in the winter. So the hours are long. Saturday, we're open all day. Sunday, we are closed. We're in a smaller town, and uh, so we don't really have the pressure here to be open seven days a week, which I think helps us attract and recruit people. Um, other than that, if they're working in the morning, they're free to leave at six. Uh, if they're working the evening shift, they may not come in till lunch. And everybody's scheduled uh, a day off as well. So. Why do you think more women aren't on the sales force? That is something that just confounds me as well. I must say, it is a fabulous job uh, for women. The hours, I don't think, would be the, the factor that they're not because there's so many women in real estate, and certainly those hours are as bad or worse than, than the ones that we, we do. Um, I really don't know. I think maybe, again, it's the stereotype that we really have, or need to work hard to overcome that stereotype, particularly with women. When I look at the business today, I see that there are re really two types of salespeople. One that handles the normal ups or the floor traffic where people just come in off of an ad or a phone call. And then you have those that come through the web or the internet. Do you, what's the difference between the two types of salespeople? Well, we here have one gentleman who is uh, dedicated to our internet customers. Um, they, they're very um, technologically savvy. They've done a lot of homework, a lot of times. And this is not to say that our regular floor traffic doesn't it have the same issues and the same interests. Um, but they, time is an issue for them a lot of times. They need to do it conveniently from their office or uh, they want to get information at home at night. Um, so you really have to give them the information they want. You, can, you certainly can't play games with any of these folks, but they want accurate information in a timely manner. And uh, it really takes somebody who, who has good follow-up skills, um, needs to know a little bit about technology, but that's not a big thing. But uh, just a very organized, methodical, accurate person. Now, in your experience, and you may want to just give a, a general number in terms of income, possible annual income, including incentives and bonuses. And I know you all probably still do the so-called spiffs to move certain product. So realistically, an average salesperson, what are you talking about in annual income? Here, we're probably going to be, a good salesman will be in the fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 range. And you are considered a small store. We're, we're an average size store. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And that's, you know, like I said, for someone with a high school education. And um, it's it's good work. Uh, you're working with people all the time. And a, a clean, you know, new environment. It, I really think it's a terrific place to be. Of the salespeople that you have here, you find that uh, now that the market is, especially car companies, are really going after the Hispanic market, are you bringing on board his Hispanic employees? Every chance we get. That is a very another very difficult uh, demographic to hire. Um, if you have a Hispanic person on board, the times that we have, they're very successful. Word of mouth travels very quickly in that community, or at least here it does. And uh, you, you don't have to do very much advertising at all for them to soon discover that you have somebody that 
that can speak their language. Um, yeah, that, that's a trick is to find them. We've, we've gone to the organizations here in town um, that work with English as a second language to try and, and put out the word that we have positions available for Hispanic speaking people or Spanish speaking mm -hmm. uh, folks. But uh, that's a trick. It's a trick. So what would you say to a person that may be considering car sales as a as a prof as a profession uh, what kind of I guess is there any basic information or basic knowledge that they should probably look into having before they come approach you well it is a people people job so if, if you're a shyer person if you're not comfortable meeting new people all the time and building rapport with them pretty quickly it that may not be the job for you because it is well, it's salesmanship it's it's like selling any other product um, you, other than that, it's just a matter of working hard. You need to have a really, really good work ethic. And, uh, well, you're, you're pretty much self-employed, really, when you're here. I mean, we provide you the product. We um, pay for the advertising. We pay the power bill and everything. At that point, it's up to that particular individual how hard they want to apply themselves in their own time. What are a couple of the myths that people may still have about the salesperson that really doesn't exist? Oh, that, well, I mean, certainly here, you know, the fact that they're lying or cheating or stealing or anything like that. That's certainly, you know, we've been here in this community for 30 years and we're hoping to be here for another 30 or more years. And it's a smaller town. You just simply can't get away with that kind of behavior. So that's, I think that's probably the biggest one is the tricks and the hiding information. But so much of the information now that folks want is available readily on the Internet. So, you know, we just assume people already know, come in armed with a lot of that information. And for the women that may be watching this show and they're probably considering uh, getting into another field, and obviously in this field, they may be able to earn more than their spouse or significant other. What do you have to say to them? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Just come and give me a call. I'm hiring. <laughs> so it really is. It's a, it's a terrific career. Again, you're, you're working with people. It's, it's the highest highs in this business. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's, you're around new cars all the time, and uh, the new car smell, um, that's just, I'm, I, I don't know why there aren't more women in it, I wish there were. What are some of the incentives that sales people are, are offered as being on, on the staff? Well, certainly the, the factory puts up, um, the manufacturer, in our case General Motors, puts up incentives for the um, salespeople, depending on their, they have to have product knowledge, they have to be certified in their training to, to participate in those. Um, and that, those are from cash to um, trips or you know variety of things that are offered and then of course we as the dealership put up incentives all the time for salespeople for um, you know volume and um, CSI which is customer satisfaction uh, that's something that every individual salesperson is monitored uh, his customers send in a cloud um, survey anonymously if they'd like and send it back in we, those are all tabulated by the factory and the uh, salespeople are held accountable for their customer satisfaction so they're rewarded for that um, other than that, you know, we have all kinds of contests and right. things going all the time just to keep it fun. Are dealers still offering uh, new cars as a demo for the salesperson? Very rarely. You don't see that very often at all. Um, our insurance companies kind of cringe when they see that. And liability issues have become so great that that's not a very common uh, benefit any longer. Is there uh, some kind of extra cash for transportation? No, not usually. At the manager level, sometimes you'll see either a demonstrator still made available or um, money in lieu of, but, um, you know, a car allowance, that kind of thing, but not, not for the salespeople. Great. Sandy, thanks for taking the time. Oh, you're very welcome. Enjoyed it. This is Roosevelt Gifts with Auto Network, and we're here in Concord, North Carolina, with our Ask the Dealer segment, talking about the new car salesperson. And my guest is Cindy Minert, dealer principal for Ben Minert, Pontiac Buick GMC. And as always, please buckle up. Don't drink and drive. See you next time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We both did. <laughs>